How does the man in the moon cut his hair? Why did the turkey cross the road? What do you get when you cross an elephant and a rhino? Because he wasn't a chicken. Eclipse it! <laughs> <laughs> What's brown and sticky? Hell if I know. A stick. I can't fake laugh, I'm sorry. Why couldn't the kids get into the pirate movie? What's a pachyderm's favorite? Oh, uh, wait, no. Because it was rated R. The blind guy's swinging his dog around like a helicopter on its leash. And a stunned onlooker says, what are you doing? He says, ah, oh, just looking around. My name is Christian. I specialize in comedic acting and character voices. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't think there's a formula for funny. It's more of uh, life experiences. You're always, you know, you're adapting. It's a learning thing. What makes something funny, to me at least, is the ability to comment on everyday life. Take the familiar and turn it on its head. Then I take this and I dial it right to 11. Hey mom, I'm home from school. Something smells great. How long until dinner? I'm starving. <laughs> My art involves watching those around me, creating these characters. But it's difficult because everybody has a different sense of humor. I often look to the comedic greats for inspiration. Oh, I'm a bad boy! It looks so effortless, but they really were masters of their craft. You knew their comedy was genuine and you always felt a part of the act. It was really timeless. What can I do? Well, there must be something you can do. Well, I, 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 I can play glow little glow worm on an E-flat alto sax. <laughs> there was a man who loved the bees. He was their earnest friend. He used to sit upon their hives, but they stung him in the end. <laughs> Thank you, I knew you'd like it. So yeah, a formula for funny? I, I, I don't know. Uh, for me, it's more of an art form we continue to work on every day. And you just can't hold a scientific lens to the art. We need humor in our lives, but I, I worry that thinking about it too much can really take the magic away. Humor is always a positive thing. It's something that is universal that we all relate to. We can smile, we can laugh. I mean, we laugh at different things, but we all laugh. Mark Twain said that the secret source of humor is not joy, it's sorrow. My name is Peter McGraw. I'm an associate professor of marketing and psychology at the University of Colorado Boulder. I'm also the director of the Humor Research Lab, AKA Pearl. <coughs> For a large part of the community, this really positive psychological response, humor, amusement, has been overlooked. I think one of the challenges of studying humor is that not everybody thinks that it's worthy of study. It's just hard to get people to agree on what is funny and what is not funny. So when you're trying to answer the question, what makes things funny, and you start looking at the theories that are out there, you find what I call the big three. So the oldest, going back to Plato and Aristotle, is a theory called superiority theory. Essentially the idea that we tend to laugh at bad things that are happening to other people. The next idea has various names, release theory, 
for relief theory. He says that humor is this sort of leaking out of aggressive tensions. Dalio! Sort of in acceptable kinds of ways. Oops! And then finally, most dominant of these theories is some version of incongruity theory. The idea that we laugh at things that are surprising, that are kind of inconsistent with our expectations. Sometimes they're kind of a mashup of two things that, that seemingly don't belong together. Oopsie! So one of the challenges with each of the three theories is that, that they don't really explain the wide variety of things that we tend to find funny. What you need really is a menu of different theories to be able to explain the, the vast variety of things that people tend to find amusing. So the Humor Research Lab's primary focus is to answer the question, what makes things funny? One of the things that, that we do in the Humor Research Lab is paper and pencil based surveys. We present people stories, jokes, and so on, and ask them how funny they are, how offensive they are. But a participant might find themselves in a really unusual situation. We ask participants to thrust their hand into buckets of ice cold water and then ask them to complain about it in some conditions in a humorous way and in some conditions in a more serious way. This right here is my lab. All right, everybody. This is a weird thing we're gonna do here today. With comedy, it's never guaranteed. You have to test them out on stage. Our family's greatest gift is our record collection. First, you will listen to The Who. Then you listen to Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath. And then, a little bit of The Monkees. Charlie! What's up with all these, what do you call them? Vegetables? I don't care how good the food is, it's... <laughs> some work and some need a little polishing. Oh, they're very phallic. Hmm, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, not in my lifetime. <laughs> wow, sir, you have a lot, a lot of cassette tapes. Ooh, journey. <laughs> Keep on believing. That's nice. Ooh, poison. They were very good. Oh, Perry Como. <laughs> you don't know that one. I don't need music while I buy my vegetables. <laughs> Another one to put in the character pocket. <laughs> <laughs> What has come to be kind of the foundation for the inquiries in Hurl and, and has actually received a lot of support from the research that we're doing is this idea that humor arises from benign violations. There needs to be something that seems threatening, amiss, or wrong, or what we say violations, to laugh at. Of course, the violations in the world don't normally amuse us. And so there needs to be some other judgment there, some other recognition that that situation is safe or what we say benign. In the case of, of humor, context matters, right? So the situation that a person's in, as well as also their own disposition. So who they are, what their personality is, what are their values and beliefs and so on. And a benign violation approach can take that into account because what one person sees as okay and as wrong, and thus laughs, one, another person just sees as okay, or another person just sees as wrong. And so in that way, the theory helps do a, a really good job of explaining these vast individual and cultural differences in a sense of humor. I think it'll always be open-ended because, you know, everybody is different. It's just going to be the reality of it. 
there's funny in everyday life. There's an intelligence to humor. It's a thoughtful construction. You don't have to be the funny guy. You don't have to be this person. You just have to be yourself and have a point of view. I think everybody's funny, and I think every joke is funny. If you can find the right audience for it, if you can find the right topic. And that's because humor is this uniquely individual thing that depends on your values, your beliefs, your experiences, your culture. There are no universal situations for humor. But what is art to me might actually be science to another. Uh, the human mind works in so many different ways uh, that why wouldn't we want to try and figure that out? Because I think it's such a beneficial thing. I still don't believe in a formula for funny, but I'm always interested in hearing people's take on it. And you know what? At the end of the day, I think Roger Rabbit once said, my whole purpose in life is to make people laugh. And I couldn't think of anything better in this world to be inspired by. Can you?